Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Feelers, and today I'm going to do a beginner's tutorial on how to create a simple mosaic. So let's get started. So I pulled this photo in from the stock photos, and I have the name of the photo. I just copied this information right here, and it's in the description, so you can look there for it and do a search for that by name. And it's just a simple city. And I am going to duplicate it just to be on the safe side. So Control or Command J. And so we have a duplicate. I can turn off the original. I'm not planning on using it. That's just in case I have to get back to it. So right down here, we have um, live filters. And live filters, if I click that, there's one called Voronoi. Voronoi, I believe that's how you pronounce it. So I'll click that. And a box should open up. And this is what the box looks like. And Voronoi just kind of turns things into a mosaic, but they're much too big. So I am going to pull the cell size down quite far. Now it, on your screen, it may look like very little, like almost nothing there. But if I do a close up, let me get close. You'll see that it's all there. And if you print it, you will, you should be able to see it all if you have a decent printer. That's like a one minute thing on creating it. But that's not the finished product because if you really want to take it a step further, what I do now is I will duplicate this, Control or Command J, and I will hide the bottom one. Actually, I will rasterize the bottom one right now because Voronoi live filters in general take up a lot of processing power. And since I know exactly where it's going to be, I'm fine with this right here. So what I'll do is I'll right click and I'll say rasterize. That's for the set, the one below. Now I'll take the one on top, and what I want to do with that one is double click on the Voronoi filter. This time I want to double click on it, and I want to make the line width, leave the cell size the way it is, but I want to make the line width larger because I want the darkness, and I need that for when I make a selection later. So then I'm going to close that, and now I can right click and rasterize this one also. So I can take now my flood select tool and I am going to make sure that my tolerance is pretty high. Like I'm, I'd say 33 or something in that area. I'm on the current layer and I'm, I don't want contiguous. I want it to select all of the same color. And if I get really close, I'm going to try and pick some of this color right in here. And if I want, I can just add, just to make sure as I scroll around, if I see some more that maybe didn't get selected. It doesn't have to be an exact pick. Every single thing doesn't, but the more that gets picked, the better. So that looks pretty good. I don't want to go in here because it might pick more of the brown, so I'll leave that. And then I'll just bring out, I'll go, for, I'll go back to full screen. And what you see here is just a selection of all those outlines. All I have to do now is hit the delete key or control or command X just to cut it out. So I'm going to hit delete. And now I'm going to do control or command D to deselect. And it doesn't look like anything, but if you take off the back, what you have now is holes in inside the thing. And so the, what did I do that for? Well, there's a reason I did that because what I want to do is I can turn the back one on now. So that brings me back the black outline. But with the front one, because I cut that all out, now if I go to filters and I go to 3D, and let me get a close up here, see what's happening. I can now, instead of a flat thing, I can make it look 3D. I can even do a bevel and emboss, but let's just stay with 3D for now. Let's try that. And I think that's pretty good. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go bevel and emboss and maybe do an inner bevel. And I could do the same kind of thing and even soften it. But I think in this case, 3D worked out really good. So let's go back to 3D and get a feel for it. Now remember, I can change where the lighting is and all, but this is a beginner's tutorial and you could play around with the direction of the lighting. This is all I needed. So there you go. So now we're going to go back. And again, it's very small on the screen right now, so you might not be able to see it.
but you just noticed that when I go closer, you can see they're all 3D. So now alone, you can leave it at that. There you have a mosaic and it's in 3D, but I still want to take it one step further. So here's what I'm going to do. And you don't have to watch this part. What I'm going to do is take these two and we might as well um, group it and then rasterize it because we don't need separate layers. So now, now that it's rasterized, it's one picture and it still looks like it's 3D. Once again, I only do that because it's easier on the processor. And once you know exactly where your item is going to be and it's in set to the right size and everything, then you can rasterize it. And I always have the original just in case. So next thing I want to do, and you don't have to stay around for this part, but I think it's kind of interesting. Let's get close. Let's get a close up of the corner here. And I am going to take a rectangle tool and I'm going to go from the top and I think I'll do squares. I'm going to do square. So I'm holding shift and I'm doing square. So now we're going to take the square and go like that and choose one of the colors from here. I think maybe I'm going to choose one of the, maybe the green. This is a nice green, so let's let's try and pick some kind of nice green. I think that's a little too dark. Let's go a little lighter here. I think that one looks good. So it's a nice green right now. We can change it if we don't like it. So if I get a little closer, I showed you in a recent tutorial. Uh, I call it my repeat tutorial. If you do Control or Command J and then do not touch on any other tools and you just drag it over and you can hold shift and snap it into place because snapping is on and then if you no longer touch anything else you keep doing control or command J and you just it repeats in the exact same spot where it was before now I can with a keyboard shortcut move out as long as I'm not touching another tool, I can move around. I'm holding the space bar, but then I can continue because I did not touch another tool. So what I did just now, just like that, was create a border. And I created it a little bit big, and I'll show you that because I believe that one's a little off. I'm going to delete that one, and then I'll select all of these. I'm going to hold shift and just make it hit the end and that's it. So now if I take this first one or the last one, whichever one you want to do, and you do uh, either a 3D or a bevel and emboss, you can do whatever you choose. Say I did bevel and emboss, uh, inner bevel. And let's get a close up to see what it looks like. And that looks like a nice tile. Um, if I want to do the 3D, we can do both. We can have both on it. That's even a nicer tile. So I'll leave them both on and I'll leave it just like that. And now let's go back. I'm going to take this. This is selected. I'm going to say edit, copy, and then I'm going to select the first one, hold shift, and the last one and say edit, paste effects. And now they are all tiled on top. So I am going to group all of this now, including the first one. Now again, it's using a lot of processing power because there's effects on every one of them. But if I group it and then I right click and rasterize it, now it's just a solid picture. So we don't have to worry about it so much. So now all I have to do is hold my Alter Option key. And if I hold Shift, I can drag it down and it should be snapping. For some reason, mine is not snapping, but let's try it again. It should snap. There it goes. It's snapping to the edge. So that's that's the other part of the frame. Now I'll do another one. I'll hold Alt Option. I'm sorry, just Alt or hmm. I'm going to select this one now and hold Alt or Option. And then I'll say Arrange, Rotate 90 degrees. And let me pull out because we don't need all of this. So I will drag this. I'm trying to get it close to the edge, which is so that this piece kind of snaps to the edge, which is good. So now that we have that, we obviously it's too long. 
So what we need to do is cut out all the rest. So I'm going to pull this down just so it snaps to the end. And I'm going to drag it over here. And let's see where we're at. And we're still a little bit off, so I have to drag that a little bit more because it's not showing, it's not meeting up. So I think that's closer. And the top looks pretty good. So that's good. And now what we'll do now is we will duplicate that again. Or you can do copy and paste, or you can just option and drag. And we're bringing that one to the end. And now we're taking all three of these and we're grouping them. I think we need to rasterize it. And after you rasterize it, you should say rasterize and trim because now it gets rid of all the extra that we don't see. So that's the outer frame. And now if we control or command J, we do, and we grab the second one, let's grab it from underneath. And we can bring that in by holding command, just bring that in closer. And what we need to do now is with the command held, We'll just bring the sides up like that and these sides out. And then all you have to do next is go to adjustments, hue and saturation, and you could pick another color. You could turn it, think about one of the colors that are in there, maybe one of the tans. Let's see. Let's see how we can get this tan. If I'm there, I can saturate it more or less. I can give it more luminosity or less. So I can do anything like that. Or if I want to go to a different color, I can go anything I want. So you just play around and you get the color that you want. I'm actually liking the purples because there's some of this pinkish purple in there. So I will leave it. Now, maybe I'll just go back to the one with tan. So let's, let's go with that. And there we go. Let's go back to the center. And now you have a mosaic. And if you want, you can do drop shadows. I'm not going to keep going because it is a beginner's tutorial. And remember, it looks hard. I don't know how much you can see on the screen, but if you get really close, you can see it is a mosaic now. You know what I mean? And it has a nice tile frame all around. So why don't you just try it yourself? I hope you found these videos useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee at buymeacupofcoffee.com slash df. And I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.